welcome to Last Three Brain Cells here. I'm Sammy Terramina here, blogger of Around the OA, the host of OA Now, and also one of the hosts of Between Terramina's on Orient Native Television. I'd like to welcome my friend Ian Weatherspoon, my co-host of Between Terramina's, and also who is joining us from home in Royal Oak. Um, Ian, feeling getting better a little bit here? It looks like you're a little congested, my brother. Hey, it's uh, it's football time. That means the bug is going around. It's cold out. And it's what we live for. You so know, it doesn't look good when you good. have two winter storms projected, forecasted. I mean, like coming up. I mean, most About likely, time. most likely winter weather advisors will be issued here around our area. So that should be very interesting. Of course, I've been in contact with the National Weather Service in White Lake. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. And um, with the with my spotter training, of course. Um, nice. So it's, we got NFL playoff time, baby, here. Of course, when you look at the playoffs. I mean, like, just excited to hear about that. We got the AFC and the NFC playoffs are set. Um, when you look at the season, how it's been, I mean, obviously, um, how's the season been for, um, as the season kind of like, let's go AFC first and then we'll go NFC. So in the AFC, is it been the season you expect in the AFC this year? Um, no. <laughs> One thing keeps playing in my mind is when we did this preseason, I suggested the Patriots could win the AFC East. Man, so are you a was, liar? That was uh, foolish. But um, I think, I don't know. I think to a lot of people's surprise, the dominance of the Ravens, mm -hmm. um, especially the last three quarters of the year, we'll say, I guess. But Of course, Baltimore is part of my empire. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Um, or my Sammy Empire. Yep, they are. Guys, uh, shut up. <laughs> Ask Anthony that question. Uh, I'm whoever's winning is part of your empire. You're just a a fair weather. Oh fan, no, 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 say. no, no! My two teams are. <laughs> I got one team in. The other team's out. When when are you gonna? You know, you do have a team in. They have a home playoff game for the first time in thirty years. Well, that is. That team? Well, my, I've always been a Ravens fan. You know that. Uh, well, you better be a Lions fan before all. We'll see how this goes. But we got listen. We got we got the AFC. So you kind of surprised with Baltimore's dominance to the AFC. Uh, the dominance, I'd say, um, Cleveland's resurgence mm -hmm. or their just their overall success this year in general is a surprise. Houston, Houston, Houston is a huge surprise. Won the AFC uh, South this year. Jacksonville's a huge surprise, mm -hmm. I think. Um, a, lot, a lot of big surprises in the AFC, to me. Mm -hmm. Well, my biggest, you agree? Well, my biggest surprise this year, I didn't expect Jacksonville to go out of the playoffs the way they to did. To be that bad. To be that yeah. bad. Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, I, I was surprised Cincinnati didn't make the playoffs. I mean, obviously, the Joe Burrow injury was huge for them. Um, also, you know, the L.A. Chargers not making the playoffs obviously you know because i saw their hype video and all that and basically just like going like dude why are you doing a hype video you know on twitter surrounding your schedule yeah. you know i still remember the um you know that whole thing with the lions issue that they did there i still can't believe they did that but what did they do remember that remember that kansas city and you know, the um the intro for the rams um enough for the charge when they introduced their schedule it's on x um they did like a little like they did everybody with the scheduling, and then when they put the Lions, they did like this, like um, this gambling hotline thing, you know, that they did on Twitter, and oh, then the Lions fans attacked it. I mean, like I should show you the link that about that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, and then when you look at the AFC, um, yeah, surprise the Chargers didn't make it. Um, obviously, you know, you you got um, you're likely gonna have like some coaching changes next year with the AFC. Um, oh, yeah. but a team that always finds a way to make the playoffs every year has been Mike Tomlin. Ever since he took over right. in Pittsburgh, you know, for Coach Bill Cower, I mean, like he he really had. I mean, like he hasn't had a losing season, and he led it's the insane. And insane, and he led the and he led the Steelers back to the playoffs this year. It's How, incredible. It's incredible. It's nuts. It is. It is. Um, I. <laughs> Can't say enough good things about that. I mean, they haven't won in a while. They haven't won a Super Bowl. I don't. I don't remember the last playoff game they've won. 
but that in, in the NFL to have that level of mm-hmm. consistency is is mm-hmm. crazy because it's a league where mm-hmm. I'll say teams rise and fall quickly. Yes, you know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, look at Kansas City. They have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Not much else. And right when you look Bad at this year, and when you look at standards. when you look at of course um the Taylor Swift um. Brittany Mahomes thing. It's kind of like this drama like thing for Kansas City. I don't know when did when did the NFL start going all uh, going gossip about Taylor Swift and Brittany Mahomes? I mean, we we never seen this in our time. Um, well, I think the NFL's grown more every year and the players continue to be more high profile, so when one of the most famous men starts dating the most famous woman it's it's this is what you get and the media eats it up i know and the media has been eating us up all right media likes to make uh stars you know or i guess they do um they like money and of course they do they do and then let's go to the nfc here obviously before we talk the playoffs um biggest surprises and disappointments of the nfc this year Surprise, I would say off the top, the way the Eagles have <laughs> fallen apart, and I'm gonna knock on wood and hope they continue to and they're they're bounced. Um, but yeah, they They did cost me in the O one TV fantasy league. I'm still very upset about that. Oh uh, man, I gotta remind that reminded me to bring put the uh I gotta give away the trophy tomorrow, unfortunately. Oh my goodness gracious. But, I'm sorry um, to hear that. Yeah, that's all right. Um yeah, I, I mean, they went one in five down the stretch. I know one in five. That's pretty surprising. Mm-hmm. Um, and to get absolutely shellacked by the Giants, I loved it. Oh man, did I love it! Um, but that's a surprise. Um, I, I would say the NFC held serve for the most part, you know, with the exception of the Eagles not winning that division. Um, you know, we knew Dallas was good. We knew the Niners were really good. We knew the Lions were good. Mm-hmm. I would say, um, you know, you, you always question whether the Lions can, you know, build on momentum from a previous year or, you know, mm-hmm. because after 2014, when they had a great year, they had a really good defense. They completely fell apart in 15. Um, but for them to finish... 2022 strong and to come out and win the division in 23 i don't think was a huge surprise no Um, not really i mean you got to look at also i thought a team that was surprised me was green bay i mean green bay got hot you know what i mean late and jordan love Love had a really good year he had a nice year i mean like who ever thought his first four years starting a quarterback but a team i was really surprised with and i'm gonna stay in the nfc north here is the vikings i mean i didn't expect minnesota to have a uh, step back a little bit, especially when you look at the play of Kirk Cousins before he got hurt. Um, you know, I mean, like in having to go to different quarterbacks. So when you look at Minnesota, you know, I, I was surprised with them with the way that they played. I mean, this year, you know, they're good. I don't like them, but I have to respect them because they're a good team. They lost, Kirk, they were on their fourth quarterback. And you know, they don't have a running game. Mm-hmm. They don't have that. They lost TJ Hawkinson. Um, it's it's no wonder they, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> weren't that great, but they fought like the Dickens and they won some big games. I mean, they beat the Niners. Um, to, to, for a team to be on your fourth quarterback, to lose your best receiver for a long time and Jefferson early in the year, like they, they battled. Um, but you have to look at 2022 and they won every or a lot of their games. They won by the skin of their teeth. Yep. So that balancing was going to happen. Yep. And that was what it was. You know what I mean? Obviously the divisions weren't surprising. Obviously the West went with the Niners, um, the North, the lions, the East, the Dallas Cowboys. What was the biggest shock? As mentioned, you talked about with Philly, um, and then the AFC and the AFC South. I mean, like, 
we talked about the NFC South in the preseason. We talked who was going to win that division. Tampa ends up winning that division. New Orleans had a chance, but didn't get in. Um, Atlanta just fired their coach. Washington just <laughs> fired their coach. Um, so basically, so now I think there's, I think there's a couple of jobs out there. I mean, like obviously when you look at it, so that should be really interesting when we, um, when we get to that, you know what I mean? Talking about what job you think is most attractive and, you know, obviously there's a college football championship game going on between Michigan and Washington this evening. The big question is, will Jim Harbaugh go back to the NFL? So a lot of questions, you know, when you look at coaching searches, um, particularly in the NFC, you know, even the AFC as well with the Chargers job, um, the Vegas job. Um, you know, I think the Vegas job, I think who are, the interim coach there, I think he should get it full time in my opinion. But I'm not, I'm not Mr. Agree. Davis, but... You know, so we'll see what happens there. Um, there's a lot. The Patriots job might come open. I think Belichick stays. You do? <laughs> yes. Fair enough. Fair enough. So um the Bears job still might come open. I think the Bears job stays. I think that coach shaved his job. <laughs> I I don't know. We'll see. I I really think that is a landing spot for Harbaugh think that is Chicago is I think because it's close to Ann Arbor it's close to his home it's an NFL job and if I think a lot depends on the direction that organization is going to move you don't think he signs that big contract with Michigan now if he signs that contract with Michigan he knows he's going to be moving for life you never know you never yes. know um I think his goal here is to win the thing tonight and move on to the NFL I don't know. I'm, I don't know the man. I'm not a fan of him, no, uh, particularly. Neither but neither am I. We're both Spartan um, fans, by the way. I think I think the NFL life is just that much better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So of course you would want to try to get back to the league. But I, I think uh, I think Chicago, I think LA, I think Las Vegas for Harbaugh. Possible. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens there. We you don't think Belichick. Uh, would want to go out west, coach the Chargers? No, no. You think he's gonna? He, I, if he if he retires, he's gonna hang it up. You know that. He's gonna hang it up. I think the Chargers job, ownership notwithstanding, is the most attractive job. Well, then again, you know they're looking for a general manager too. So you know a couple of those jobs are looking for general managers. I mean, Washington just hired two GM to run their organization, and then. You know, Atlanta could be an interesting fit. I mean, they're they got a young nucleus there. I mean, B. John Robinson, you got um Desmond Ritter there. I mean, is he the guy in Atlanta? And then you have And um, I think Atlanta throw this in the mix to make the job even more appealing. What if Chicago decides to move on from Justin Fields and Atlanta's a trade partner? Ooh, that would be good. I think Atlanta would be a very good they Justin need a Fields. quarterback yeah, desperately. desperately. And I think Justin Fields makes perfect sense for Atlanta if they can go get him. You know? Yeah. And I think he might be arguably the best quarterback in that in the division. No offense to Derek Carr. No offense to Baker Mayfield. But I just think that if Justin Fields win that division, I think it'll be great. It'll be very interesting. I mean Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, there's a lot. The the Panthers in that division as well. Do you think Bryce Young? Do you think Bryce Young? And here's the thing: in the draft, you look at Chicago has now got the number one pick in the draft, and they got the first and the ninth overall pick in the draft. Are you kidding me? I can't believe Carolina would do that trade. <laughs> I still can't believe they would. I mean, for Bryce would, Young too. For Bryce Young. They, they, they Bryce Young was Bryce Young wasn't great. He wasn't no, he great. Was, I would say not good. <laughs> not great. He's not good. He's too small. So this now comes up to my are we ready to talk playoffs, man? Yeah. All right. Let's give it a go here. Um let's, let's look at the it. AFC first. Obviously, we look at the first round playoff matchups here. Um we got it we got Pittsburgh going to Buffalo. Um we got Pittsburgh going to Buffalo to take on the Bills. Um, this is going to be a very interesting matchup, um, between two teams that are, um, that, are, that is doing a, um, it'd be interesting to see how that matchup goes. Um, 
So what's your take on this matchup? Uh, there's something off with the Bills. Why? You know, they don't have – they still don't have the offense. They have Josh Allen. He's all right. They have Diggs. He's all right. He's good. Diggs is good. But Cook – Gabe Cook's Davis. had a nice year. Cook's I mean, had a nice year running back for Buffalo. They've had they've had good years. I just don't know if I can trust them in the playoffs, especially the way the Steelers have come on after they let go of Matt Canada and moved to Mason Rudolph. Um, they're a different team now. I believe they're going to be out without T.J. Watt. Is that correct? Or I think so. But when you look at Buffalo, they changed coordinators as well. I mean, like obviously. But you know, Ken Dorsey the, was their offensive yeah. coordinator. Um, yeah. When he was let go, I think kind of the offense at Buffalo kind of really struggled a little bit. I mean, I noticed that with Josh Allen. I mean, like he he really struggled with um, with Ken Dorsey. I mean, like you know when Dorsey left, so he's really not the same quarterback with Dorsey not there being the offensive coordinator anymore. Well, their records improved. Yeah, you know, but I don't um, think Josh Allen's the same quarterback. Yeah, he's very turnover prone, mm-hmm. um, and that is big trouble against a Pittsburgh defense in the playoffs. So, you know, I'm I'll pick the Bills there, but I would not be surprised if the Steelers win it. Well, it's kind of surprised at all. It's kind of funny when you look at Pittsburgh because you know with the change over to Mason Rudolph at quarterback. Um, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. I don't trust that running back duo over there. Right. Um, Kenny Pickett's been having a nice year for Pittsburgh. I mean, when you look at Pittsburgh, you know, you look at the word consistency. And, you know, they've been very consistent. You know what I mean? Like, you look at, of course, being in the playoffs, not a fluke. You know what I mean? For Pittsburgh. I mean, have they, have, they haven't won in, a, in a, a Super Bowl in a while. We mentioned this earlier. But, you know, when you look at the weather, it's looking like it could be a snow, snowy over there. Um, you know, yeah. when you look at being in the cold, you know, it doesn't phase Pittsburgh and it's not, I don't think it's going to phase Buffalo considering Buffalo right. is going to be dealing with 70 mile power winds this week. Wow. Yep. So that's an interesting matchup. So you're going to go Buffalo in that matchup. Yeah. I'm going to go Buffalo as well. I just think that it's going to be a tight game. Stephon Dix has not had a big game yet. I expect Dick to maybe have a big game here against Pittsburgh. I don't trust Pittsburgh's secondary um, one bit. So in that matchup here, I'm going to take, um, I will take Buffalo. It's going to be closer than the score indicates. You're going to need to run the ball. Um, and I, I Buffalo does have a running game. So does Pittsburgh. So it could be a really tight game between those two teams. Um, Got to wonder if there's going to be a lot of people bringing those terrible towels up to Orchard Park. <laughs> If they can get in, yeah, they can see. get in. I That's mean, two passionate fan bases right there. That is two very passionate fan bases there. Um, staying in the AFC, um, you got um, y- this is going to be an interesting one. You got you got Miami just coming off a loss to Buffalo, going to Arrowhead to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. I mean, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Um, between you got Tua Tagovailoa against Patrick Mahomes. We call, I call the Kansas City Chiefs basically like the modified soap opera because, <laughs> you know, they got Taylor Swift there. They got Brittany Mahomes sitting in a, sitting in the, um, in a stu- in a suite. I mean, when you look at this game on paper, originally, you think to yourself, oh, Kansas City's going to come and just destroy Miami. But that's not been the case. I mean, Kansas City's been human at Arrowhead, whereas Miami, we know, has been a team that's struggled on the road. But they bring in one of the most dynamic wide receivers in the game and the cheetah, Tyree Kill. So what's your take on this matchup between Miami and Kansas City? My take is that Patrick Mahomes would do nearly anything to get Tyree Kill back in a Chiefs uniform for this game. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the spread is minus three and a half. The Chiefs are favored. 
Okay. Uh, I would debate that. That's that's what the line is that I just saw. Um, that's not a big line, and I, I I'm gonna pick the Dolphins. I, I don't am... trust Kansas City's offense. I don't necessarily trust the Dolphins on the road. Um, but I think I guess I have to look at their injuries. I know there are some offensive linemen for the Dolphins out. That could actually change my mind. Um, so that I guess it, it's gonna depend on that because if the Dolphins are somewhat whole up front on the O line. I I would take their talent over Kansas City's talent. Um, you know, I'm gonna take Miami for a couple reasons. I love the running back game of of Mostert and Eshane. Um, I think they're gonna be I'm assuming Mostert will play. I'm assuming that too, but I I love Echan um and Mostert. I mean, like I think that's a difference maker there. Um to attack of Iola, if he throws the ball right, you know what I mean? I mean gets it to gives it to the cheetah. Gets it to his other receivers. Um, I think Miami can go into Arrowhead and do this. I mean, I don't trust Kansas City offensively. I don't trust them defensively in their secondary. I think it can burn their secondary. I mean, Cheetah, I think, can have a big game here. Now, albeit Mahomes is going to use a lot of Kelsey, you know, so it wouldn't surprise me if Taylor Swift and um, Brittany mm-hmm. Mahomes complains a lot in this game. Because I'm telling you what right now, I think Miami goes in there and beats Kansas City and shocks the Chiefs. I really do. You and me are both in agreement there. My, we agree. both got Miami over Kansas City. Yep. And then could you just imagine that if, um, you know, could you just imagine that? I mean, like if Miami wins, they would have to go to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. And Baltimore laid a whooping on them, um, laid a whooping on Miami. You know what I mean? <laughs> That was just, I never, they whooped them like, they whooped them like they had no business there. Mm-hmm. And then I think this is going to, and I think the next game, this is going to be, the, I think the most funnest one of them all. Um, he, Cleveland, the Browns go to Houston to take on the Texans. I mean, this has got fun written all over it. This one, this matchup here, this has got fun written all over it, brother. Well, my only hesitation is we just saw this game a few weeks ago. Yeah, but they didn't have C.J. Stroud. Cleveland went down and smoked the Texans. Yeah, but they didn't have C.J. Stroud. Was C.J. still out? Yeah, he was still out. Mm, That's Mm -hmm. right. He came back against uh, Mm -hmm. whoever the following week. Okay, that's true. That's true. Although, man. It was still Joe Flacco and the Browns offense, Mm -hmm. you know. And they put up a lot of points. So it's hard to beat a team twice. Uh, but I I still I gotta give it to the Browns here. I um I, I hope you're right that it's the most fun game. Here's the funny part. I really like the matchup, but here's, I still see the Browns. Here's the funny part here, Ian. Deshaun Watson, if he would have played in this game, would have been <laughs> the one making the return to Houston. Right. And they would play the Browns. That would have been rough. That would have been. That, why would that be rough? They would have booed him. Pretty. You think they would have booed him? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, now you have Joe Flacco, a quarterback. Mm-hmm. He's led Cleveland, I think, to more. I think they're better with him oh, than no they doubt. were with Deshaun Watson. No doubt. Flacco is. He's been playing, like, really well. And can you just imagine this next year having those two guys in the same room next year? That says a lot. That could be interesting. Well, if the Browns win the Super Bowl, I don't think we'll see Joe Flacco anymore. You think he'll retire? I would hope so. He's almost 40. Well, with the injuries (laughs) that Cleveland had, Nick Chubb's done for the year. Yeah. They they don't have an... I mean, Jerome Ford's had a nice year for Cleveland. Um. Cleveland, Joe Flacco to me cost Dan Campbell, maybe D'Amico Ryan's the coach of the year because I think that might go to Stefanski because think- of the injuries they had mm-hmm. and to still win 11 games. Uh, that's that's, that's an, very impressive. And it's kind of funny because you notice that all the Lake Erie teams are in the playoffs this year. 
for the first time first ever. First time ever. Yeah, that's interesting. You got Detroit, Buffalo, and Cleveland are all in the playoffs. Lake Erie's got to be proud. <laughs> I'm sure Lake Erie's smiling today. Small, Lake Erie's the smallest lake lifestyle. of the Great Lakes. The smallest lake of the Great Lakes is Lake Erie. The smallest? Smaller than Ontario? Yeah, I think. I think. I don't know why. I th- you know, it's the most shallowest, my bad. Lake uh, Erie's the most shallowest of the Great Lakes. Um, well, so that she makes needs some ice. It's going to probably get iced up probably in the next two weeks or so. Good. So, but, you know, but when you look at Houston, yeah. I mean, they're their top target, their wide receivers done for the year. Who's that? Uh, I don't know who it was, but. I thought Nico Collins was their guy, but no. I, I don't. Uh, Nico Collins, no, they got another one who was out for the year. Okay. But I, I'm not sure who. CJ yeah. Stroud is. Been just insane. He's yeah. gonna be the rookie of the year. I think mm-hmm. he could be rookie of the year. Now people no say, you know, is it? You know what I mean? Could it be Jameer Gibbs? But no. to me, C.J. Stroud has to be the rookie of the year because yep. of what he's he's done. The number two overall pick. Now, number two picks in the draft has had some success lately. Aiden Hutchinson with Detroit. <laughs> C.J. Stroud. Um, people in. What the Jets are going to say, well, Zach Wilson hasn't panned out for us, you know, which is true. But I expect Zach Wilson to be traded by the end of the, um, before the draft, which is in Detroit, by the way. Um, that it is. And I think that, um, I think a good landing spot for Zach Wilson would be, you know, and I think this would be funny, is the, um, I could see the Chicago Bears maybe as a good landing spot for Zach Wilson. If As they a trade, Lions if, fan, I pray to God that if they trade, the if if they trade Justin Fields, you know what I mean? So, no, 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 no. If they trade Justin Fields, they're going to draft Caleb Williams or I think a quarterback. K- I think Caleb Williams is, is is a headache waiting with. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with what people say about him. I think, I think he's I don't a headache. see it with him, but yeah, I mean, like I agree. He, when he played Oklahoma, we played at USC. I, I think he's a headache waiting. But he might have talent, but mm-hmm. boy, the NFL but, is a man's league. It is. But CJ Stroud really has back to Houston. CJ Stroud's really been special. I mean, the standoff from Ohio State. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, like, he plays that he and you look at Houston, they don't have a they don't have a strong running game. I mean, Singletary's their best running back. Right. Um, but they don't really have a strong running game and for him to lead Houston to the playoffs to win the AFC South, that says a lot about where that team's been in the first year for under CJ Stroud. He should have led the Ohio State Buckeyes to a national championship last year. Had not been for that crazy game against Georgia where Georgia escaped. Didn't Ohio State miss a field goal? To they win missed it a at field the field goal to win it at the end. Yeah. So I mean He's he's really good. He's yeah. really good. He's and legit. I'll the tell Panthers you. completely whiffed. I'm the getting... Panthers. Can you imagine? You pick Bryce Young over him. Oh man. I mean, well, they had a choice between Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. They had the the pick of the litter. They had the pick <laughs> of the litter, and they ended up going with Bryce Young, the and they ended up Bryce Young didn't have a very good year this year for Carolina. I'll tell you that much right now, but. I'll tell you uh, what, no. if he gets more talent around him, you know, but problem is with Carolina is they don't have a lot of draft capital. No, and Carolina is going to be the worst team in football for the next three years. I think it'll be longer than three years. Well, it's quick in the NFL. It is. The, the, the fall and the rise. Mm-hmm. And we have already experienced that. So you, my, you're going to Cleveland. You yeah. Know, oh, yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to. I might take the obstacle. I talked to Joey Tysick earlier, and I said I, w- I was going to take Cleveland, but I'm going to go Houston because we need to opposite people. We need opposite, you know? Okay. We need All opposite. Right. I mean, like, we've already agreed on two teams already. We're both going Miami over KC, and then we're yep. going um, Buffalo over Pittsburgh. But I think Houston, they're going to keep this magical run continuing. I think they're going to surprise some people. Um, I'm going to take the... Um, I've got the um the Texans moving on to go moving on going to play um 
Let's see. I've got, we've got, I've got them going to Buffalo. So it'll be very interesting to see how he does there. But I've got, I've got Houston over Cleveland um, moving on there. So let's go now from the AFC. Let's go to the NFC. I mean, a lot of storylines here. San Francisco. Hold up one, one question for you. What's up? Okay. If the Browns beat the Texans and the Chiefs beat the Dolphins, and the Bills beat the Steelers. That means the Browns are going to Baltimore, right? The Art Modelbo. Oh my God. Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco goes to Baltimore. Just oh. like Stafford coming here. Yeah. Could you just imagine that? That's okay. That's what I'm rooting for. You want Cleveland to go to Baltimore. So I guess I got to root for the Chiefs, Bills, and Browns. Oh this my weekend. goodness. <laughs> I mean, it'll be interesting. I mean, but I think that'll be that'll be a fun game. I mean. I think the Browns could win it. You think They're Cleveland could be, could be? You think Cleveland could be Baltimore? They've proven they have. They, they have beaten them. Yes, they already did this year. I think that in game, their place. Oh my goodness, so. that does scare me. <laughs> that does scare me. So we'll see how that one goes. Being a Ravens fan myself, Baltimore, of course, part of the Sammy Empire. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. Let's go to the NFC now. Um, San Francisco, the number one seed in that division in the um, NFC. No surprise. I think a lot of people in Detroit are still very upset with Brad Allen. Um, especially no, he's all right. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. But I know that a lot of people in Detroit are still very upset that he cost You better them. not come here, man. I'll tell you what. Yeah, especially with how Lions fans are. I mean, like with what he did against the Dallas Cowboys, that was a t- that was absolutely atrocious. I mean, Actually, he- that, should, that should be his punishment. He should have to come here and ref. Ref the game on Sunday. Well, can you just imagine if he if he came over there? Can you just imagine how Lions fans would feel? I mean, like what he what he did was absolutely wrong. I mean, like he screwed over the Lions. You know it. I know it. The whole world knows it. He if screwed he over were the Lions. To ref, just imagine if he had to ref the game on Sunday. He doesn't have his officiating home, crew. Well, the first home game, he would be booed so loudly. I would almost want to see that, but. Anyways, I don't want to see that. Uh-huh. Carry on. Um, let's go now. What's your What's your thoughts on the NFC? Um, obviously, we talked about um, you know the teams. Obviously, you think the seating's right here in your in your eyes? The fact that the Cowboys got the second seed makes me want to hurl. But you know, the best seven teams are in. I guess mm-hmm. um, it is kind of weird seeing the Packers in. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. The Cowboys, ugh. So when you look I at, hope to God we get to play them again. So when you look at the matchups, obviously San Francisco's got the bye. Um, now you look at, of course, the top seed. Um, now you look at, of course, let's look at our first matchup. Um, we're going to save the Lions-Rams um, game for, la- for last. Um <laughs> so I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ian. Um, actually, yeah, let's go to last. let's go let's go to our first matchup. It's the Monday night game, Tampa Bay and Philadelphia. I mean, uh, this should be an interesting match. I don't know why this is the Monday night game, considering there's like the least amount of storylines here in this game. Um, yeah. obviously with Philly basically not being the same team, especially with Matt Patricia in your defense. Um, <laughs> taking on Tampa Bay, who I thought really underperformed in a really terrible AFC South, uh, NFC South. I mean, so what's your take on this matchup? Uh, Tampa's going to win. Why? Because Philly looks cooked. Why? Because they can't win a a football game. But DeAndre Swift didn't even play, though. Can you remind me how many touchdowns Swift has this year? He doesn't have a lot. Do I give a gosh darn about that guy? No, I don't. <laughs> the Eagles are broke. Hurts is hurt. Uh, there's no way. There's Jalen no Hurts did cost me in my own TV league. He did cost me in my Man. loss to Joe Johnson, which Man. is heartbreaking. You made it to the next round and you got beat by Joey Tysick. So yes. that hurts. Hey, that, he's a champion. It's all right. That hurts both of us. That hurts our pride. 
But it wasn't ideal. when I look at the matchup, and I'm looking at the playoff matchup as is, yeah. the Eagles, they're still one of the favorites to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah, no. they look absolutely atrocious. Last yeah. five weeks, one and four last five games. That's rough. That's really rough. And yeah. they got blown up by the Giants. You know what? <laughs> you know what the issue was? They let their defensive coordinator go to Arizona. That's why yeah. they're struggling. Matt Patricia is leading that defense. That's atrocious. <laughs> why would you hire Matt Patricia to run your defense in the first place? That is a he terrible a scenario. He shouldn't, but he does. But yep. I think Philadelphia finds their way in this game. I think it's a low-scoring game because both defenses are good. Tampa's got a good defense. Philly, you know, Philly, when when stage right, is a good enough team to be okay. But I think the play of Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown is going to get the job done. Um, I think Philly moves on, beats Tampa, and I hope Tampa wears those cream, creamy orange uniforms they wear. I hope they wear those. That would be funny. I don't think they will, but I, I disagree. I think Tampa wins. I think Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are going to eat the Eagles secondary alive. With Darius Slay in that defense. Yeah. Is he playing? I think he's playing. Okay. Um, it don't matter. I don't matter, but he, Philly's been struggling defensively, yeah. which has been a concern. I mean, obviously, yeah. they do have the a back very... end of that defense is not good. No. <laughs> and, but I still think Philly wins that. I think they got enough offense, enough collective thoughts to win that game. I think they got enough collective thoughts. We'll so, see. We'll see on Monday night in South yep. Florida, in Tampa, Florida. And then we got the Green Bay, the Mike McCarthy Bowl, Green Bay Packers yep. and the Dallas Cowboys which is going to be an interesting matchup because Dallas has been on and off and they won the NFC East this year. They got Dak. They got, um, they got Pollard at running back. They got CD lamb at wide receiver. Um, and their defense has been up and down green Bay. On the other hand, Jordan love has had a nice year. He's had a really, really nice year. So, when you look at this matchup, it's going to be interesting to see how this matchup goes. So, what's your take on this? I, I, um, you know, I really think, I'm assuming Dallas will win, but I think maybe Detroit, we'll see. We'll I see don't if Detroit know. exposed them. We'll see if Detroit exposed Dallas, you know, shut down the run game, get to Dak, do not let anyone else but CeeDee Lamb beat you. You can let him have a, his game, but you can't let anyone else go off. You can't let Cooks go off. You can't let Pollard go off. You can't let Ferguson go off. Um, We'll see. I mean, the thing about Green Bay is they're young and they are... They have no pressure. They're the last team in. Dallas has all the pressure on them. Well, and look at Dallas's history. I mean, they have a history of choking in this round. They they yes. have <laughs> choked in this round. In the playoffs. In the playoffs. They have really, you know, you look at a course. I remember the game on Nickelodeon um, a couple of years ago when they played San Francisco. And San Francisco just beat Dallas. I mean, everybody thought yeah. Dallas was going to win that game. You know, you look at Dallas, everybody looks at them as America's team, obviously. You know, I'm a fan of the hockey team there in Dallas. I mean, beautiful town, beautiful city. Um, love the city of Dallas. Um, but when you look at the Cowboys, I mean, all they talk about Dallas is the Cowboys. Now, when you look at Green Bay, on the other hand, Green Bay, nobody expected them to make the playoffs this year, especially with how young that team was. And when they played the Lions in Week 2, they were absolutely atrocious. And yet, they found a way to win. You know, they found a way to get in the playoffs. They All they had to do was beat Chicago. They did that. And then, you know, they have some good wins on, on the resume. So, when you if you're Green Bay, you're right, Ian. They got nothing to lose and everything in the game. Green Bay yeah. still got a good running game. Aaron Jones 
is a very good runner. You got A.J. Dillon, who's a, who's a solid runner, too. But I think the play of Jaden Reed, our Spartan brethren, you know, Spartan brethren, Jaden Reed, um, Christian Watson, when healthy, he's been, you know, he's been okay. Um, but I think it, this all ends or ends with Jordan Love. And, you know, that's what it comes down to. I mean, since taking over for Aaron Rodgers, you know, this is his time to post his legacy. And, yeah. And I think when you look at this game here, we know the history of the Cowboys yeah. choking in the playoffs. Do yeah. I see it happening? You damn right I see it happening. Give me the Packers. Give me the Cheeseheads. I think Green Bay goes into Dallas and pulls off the upset of the Cowboys. And I think Green Bay is going to go in, go on, move on to San Francisco. Because Green wow. Bay is probably the most scariest team nobody wants to see right now with the way they're playing right now. You think so? I do think so. I do think so. What do you think? I don't know. The way they played against Carolina has me concerned about their overall and, quality. And play. also the Giants, too. I mean, they did not play well against the Giants either. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I think Dallas wins. You think Dallas? I do. I'm going Green Bay. I'm going Green Bay. And Fair then enough. last but not least, the Lions and the Rams. Sunday yeah. night football. A lot of storylines involved. Matthew yeah. Sta yeah, there's a lot of storylines. Sean McVay versus Jared Goff. Um, Matthew Stafford's return to Detroit. Um, Stafford played for Lions, I think, for 12 years. Um, and then the storylines are there. And you look at, of course, I look at the day of the trade when Matthew Stafford asked for a trade and Brad Holmes, the general manager, granted him his request, trade him to the Rams for, I think, five draft picks and Jared Goff? I think it was five total pieces. Goff and Brockers were the players and they got two firsts and a third. That ended up being a great trade for the Lions. For both sides, actually. The Rams, they got their Super Bowl and yep. then, and then for the Lions, look at that team. Just look at that team. Well, they turned that. They turned Goff. Brockers was whatever, but they turned Goff. And then the draft picks became, I think, through trades and other things with those with those assets, they became. I want to say like, Jamo, Iffy, Gibbs, Ain Hutchinson. Florida. Uh, no, that they earned on their own with okay. the with the number two pick. Yeah, but Gibbs and Laporta this year, Jamo and Iffy. Iffy, I think, was the first draft, the third rounder. So mm -hmm. they, they. I mean, Brad Holmes has done a great job, and look, the thing here is when Stafford left, and we can talk to Joe Johnson about this. There were a lot of Stafford fans mm -hmm. that became Rams fans. I didn't agree with it then. Certainly don't agree with it now. And we sent Matthew where he wanted to go. He requested to, to leave. And we sent him to L.A. That's where he wanted to go. Mm -hmm. We did exactly as he asked. All right. And he went and won a Super Bowl. But look and, at who the Lions got in return. Hey, I'm ex I'm talking about the mentality here. Okay. 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 All all of the emotion and all of the drive to win and passion needs to be on the Lions side. Goff has to prove, "Hey bro, I'm still good. I'm still here. I just beat your butt." And I'm moving on to the playoffs. Sean McVay, huge, Sean, huge game for Sean the McVay, Sean McVay, you know, obviously we know he's been a quarterback guru. You know what he did with Jared Goff when he was with the Rams. Goff, he benched Goff a couple times. And, you know, his final year with the Rams. I mean, he led them to a Super Bowl appearance. 
for goodness sake. He tried sake. to break Jared Goff. He tried to break him, you know, and he did I'm, not though. He did not. And when Brad Holmes asked in the trade, he wanted to include Jared Goff in the he. I mean, the Rams management asked if he wanted to include Jared Goff in the trade. Brad Holmes said, "Heck yeah, I can, I want Jared in this trade. Look at what Jared Goff has done." You know, Jared, Go I mean, like, in his first year, it was rough. I mean, it was really rough. His first year in Detroit was really rough. You know, and then the last, you know, and then when they went one in, um, one and six, you know, I mean, a lot of people wanted a bench, you know, but he's led this team. I mean, the players have looked at Jared as a leader. Jared's become that leader in Detroit, you know what I mean? And then, and then this year, you know what I mean? He's been very, he's been very good. He's thrown more picks this year, but he's been what the answer is for the Lions. He's been that steady at quarterback, you know, and then everybody else has developed and look at what the results have been for the Lions. Right. You know? He 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 was he you know, I I certainly wasn't a huge fan of his, but for him to to be traded here after, you know, be a California person his whole life. They call the Lions a Siberia of the, the NFL. Yeah. So, I mean, this year he had a career high in passing yards, career high. Well, no, not a career high in touchdowns. Uh, he was two off his, his high mark there. Oh, wait, not career high in yards. He had 4,600 a couple times. Mm -hmm. He was close, though, this year. Whatever. He He's had a resurgence in Detroit, and that a lot of that is credit to him and his mental makeup. And now we need to complete the process here and we need to win this game and Jared Goff has to be a big reason why we win the game you know in the first place but especially now that Laporta probably is not going to play it's going to be a miracle if Sam Laporta plays so uh, that's a big target for Jared and so that's 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 taking away a big target of his and that's going to put more of the pressure on him to find somebody else, to make a different play, to adjust. And Brock Wright comes into play here if you're a Lions fan. Remember well, what he did against the Jets? He's had <laughs> he's he had a big touchdown against the Chargers. I'm telling you. He's been hurt though. I know he's been hurt, problem. but if he comes back, he's gonna be a big piece for this for this Lions offense, you know, when he comes back. I mean, like, if he comes back. He, he's not the target or the pass catcher that Laporta is. He's you know, he's a. Uh, He's a late round tight end uh, who hasn't played in a few weeks. So it's going to, it's going to be difficult to go to that position unless Brock Wright steps up, unless uh, James Mitchell steps up. He's going to have to find production other where elsewhere. Is that going to be Gibbs? Is Gibbs going to take up? Is he going to run some routes in the middle of the field? Is he going to take a swing pass or two now? Or, you know, whatever a, a short out i mean does he get more of the balls uh does somebody like josh reynolds against his former team as well the rams does he step up and become a bigger target does donovan peoples jones have a bigger role um it's going to be on jared to to make that happen so it's it's not ideal to lose one your your second biggest target but Maybe maybe they can lean on the run game too. You, you know, got maybe Monty the run game there. Really you got Gibbs, play. obviously. I mean, there yeah. has been opportunities where Gibbs and Mon and Monty, um, you know, have been on the field together. I mean, right. that could be another opper we, that's option. That's a good thought, right there. Absolutely. I mean, like a lot of people look at the Lions and say, "Okay, um, you got a lot of pieces here, but everything starts and ends with the with up front." I mean, their offensive line is. Probably, I would say honestly, the best offensive line of football right now, um, with how good that that line's been. Um, and then you have, um, you know, you have Aaron Donald on the other side of the defensive line, you know, for the Rams. And you look at that Rams defense; they look human. I mean, they look human. I mean, like so, you know, for the Lions, I think it's a good opportunity for them to get some points and what could be a possible shootout between these two teams? It could be. I think the pass rush really needs to to step up. You know, P Stafford is not, he's similar to Goff. 
and he doesn't run, you know, especially at this age. So, well, Goff's younger though. He's, I think Goff's 28. Goff's younger, but I would argue he might be even less athletic than Stafford. Um, I, I really think, um, I really think this Lions pass, pass rush needs to get home. It, it needs to become something. Hutch has been great the last couple of games. He needs to continue that. And he needs to continue that throughout the playoffs if they're going to move on and have any success. So that pass rush and the crowd have got to get to Stafford. That's the way we can make this not a shootout. The biggest concern for gotta Lions stop fans. Their run. The biggest concern the Lions for have Lions done. fans have been the secondary. I talked to Joe Johnson about, you know, about the secondary. Um he and he said they they are the biggest concern for him. I also talked to um Oakview Middle School assistant principal Nick Casilla about um about the Lions secondary. I mean, he doesn't sound concerned, whereas Joe Johnson does. So what's your take about the Lions secondary um coming into this matchup going up against, especially when you look at Cooper Cuff and Pakwanakwa of the Rams? So that's a big challenge because the Lions secondary is not good. <laughs> But that's where the pass rush can help out. A, B, you get C.J. Gardner Johnson back, and if Aaron Glenn can figure out a way to use him, and Iffy and Brian Branch, the three DBs that you do have that are good, they're not necessarily outside corners, um, but utilize them more, especially the way the Rams with Nakua and Cup, those little, those little dudes, they're gonna work the middle of the field. You know, if the safeties can really come up and have a big game, that's the way you stop those guys, in my opinion, with the talent the Lions have. Because Cam Sutton has been exposed recently. Uh, uh, Minnesota, they have really good receivers, but yeah, Jefferson Addison. Yep. So you know that's a tough, tough task for for a, a corner. But you know, maybe Cam Sutton bounces back, has a better game, and then the outside corner. You know, the other outside corner is Vildor or... Vildor's been terrible. I mean, Vildor's right. been terrible. I mean, and Jacobs was bad, too, so... <laughs> Jacobs has been okay. I mean, he's been okay, but I... He I got would... benched for Vildor. Yes, but I just think when you look at the problems the Lions have at outside corner, do you think maybe moving Iffy to play one of those could be an option? Obviously, because you have all those three guys back on the same field. I think they would move, honestly, this may sound crazy, but I think they would move C.J. Gardner-Johnson outside before they move Iffy back outside because he's, if he started as a corner and he transitioned, and he's still a younger player, his third year, he transitioned to safety. I don't think they're going to jerk him around. Okay. I think Gardner-Johnson is somebody that can be more flexible because he's played outside corner, he's played nickel, he's played safety. I would put Gar- I would put I would put Gardner Johnson at corner. You know what I mean? I, honestly, they might. They have. They, they might, might have to. But I would not be surprised if you're the Rams now. Now let's go from the Rams side of things defensively. Yeah, you got to deal with Amara St. Brown, right? You know, obviously, and that run game. In that, that running run game attack, is no joke. That running game is no joke. So if you're the Rams for the coordinator, what? How are you preparing? How to stop Amara St. Brown? Well. I look to what they did in New Orleans. They they doubled him a lot. They took him out. So that's why it's going to be on Josh Reynolds. It's going to be on DPJ. It's going to be on Khalif Raymond, which he's probably not playing. It's going to be on a secondary guy to get open and to win his one-on-one because Amon Ra is going to get a lot of attention, especially if they're going to be thin with pass catchers. So it's on – it. If I'm Ben Johnson and the Lions, I know that they are going to do their best as the Rams to take away Amon Ra, and I've got to scheme other guys open. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This may sound weird, too. I feel like the Lions, for a lot of the year, have been somewhat vanilla in their their play calling compared to the previous previous year, Mm -hmm. where I feel like they relied more on their talent to to have a diverse run game. I don't I, I think there are still some some tricks in the bag, I I would say, 
for the playoffs. And I hope I hope there are. Um because they, they might need they might need to pull something. You know, they might need to get Brock Wright wide open to run a 60 yard touchdown. You know, they're gonna need maybe they need Sewell to catch a pass again or something insane or Skipper or you know Decker, whatever. Um you know, it might come to that point. I I really think though the key for the Lions is going to be just saying, you know what? We're running the damn ball. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to make any bones about it. We're just going to run this ball. We're going to eat up the clock. We're going to gash you five yards at a time. And you're going to go home. And you're going to go pack your bags because you're done. And we're going to move on because we have, like you said, one of the best O-lines in the game. You're in our house. And we're gonna, we're just gonna bludgeon you to death. And you're gonna go. I think you're gonna go Detroit over LA. You're gonna go. Asking me that question, Sam. No, I'm not. You're not asking me that question. I. You know the answer to that. I know the answer. You don't have to ask it. I don't need to ask it. All right. So everybody asked me about my pick. I mean, everybody asked me. I mean, I thought about this a couple of days. I caught. I thought about this about late last night, and I thought, okay. I thought Rams early on because of the experience, but then again, it's in Detroit. The Lions fan base is hungry. They want to move on. They want. They want to win their first playoff game since 1991. Um. I think in this game, I think that, you know, there's so much motivation. There's, I mean, Jared Goff against Sean McVay. Jared Goff wants to prove that, you know, the Sean McVay, look, I can still play this game. I can still play against you. And then you look at, of course, on the other side. And then, of course, you look at, of course, Matthew Stafford returning to Detroit. You don't know what the reception he's going to get. Is he going to get booed? Is he going to get 50-50? You don't know what the reception is going to be from Lions fans to Matthew Stafford, considering that he is the one that they have to go against to try to deny, you know, their fans. You know, basically, he's the one who asked for the trade. He's the one, you know, who who um, wanted to go to L.A. He's got the Super Bowl ring, you know? I mean, the Lions, we know what they have. I mean, we know that they're hungry. We know that they Detroit... It's time for a winner. And you look at what Dan Campbell's done with this team. He's turned not only this team, but he's he's he is going to be, he is a proven winning coach for this town. He has done, you know, what, a, what the Lions want. I mean, you got to give credit to Lions management. They followed the plan. They followed what, you know, they did it their way. And when you look at this game, you know, it, they're built for this moment. Their offensive line is one of the best in football. You got one of the best wide receivers in football. Jared Goff has proven to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So, in this game, I think the Detroit Lions move on because of, you know, that run game. Because I think David Montgomery is going to go, I think he's going to get maybe at least, he's going to get 100 yards in this game. I think Joe Ooh. Gibbs is going to get 100 yards in this game. Ooh. If the Lions go for 200 yards on the ground, it's mm. going to take away the Rams' ability to score offensively. Plus, the Rams are a different team on the road than they're at home. Um, so, I think the Lions do get it done in front of that rabbit fan base. And I think Jared Goff and Amara St. Brown are going to have are going to put high fives to Lions fans and Lions faithful. And I think they're going to move on. And I think, and I know you and I both. Oppose on Detroit, Dallas, on um on um on Dallas in Green Bay. So I think I think if the Lions win, which I think they're going to, and I have Green Bay beating Dallas, I think the Lions might get another home game out of this whole whole thing. So then that would mean the Lions would play Philly or Tampa Eagles. Yep. <laughs> yep. And they already beat Tampa. That would be a dream come true. Uh, Tampa's not bad. I I, I think. Like I said, Lions I think beat the them. Bucks are going to beat the Eagles. So. Mm-hmm. so we'll see what happens. All right, Ian, I wish you the best God. of luck. Make sure you get better soon, brother. 
you know, I know you've been battling the, been battling the um, sick bug going around here. Um, obviously, I've been battling it. Um, I battled it a couple weeks ago. So, you know, make sure you get better soon. Say hi to baby Marlo for me, please. I appreciate it, Sam. I will. It's great talking NFL playoffs with you. And I just want to say that if the Lions do win, uh, probably regardless of the Lions winning or losing, I will probably be crying. Yes, she would night. be. Yes, she would be. <laughs> all right. Thank you really much, Ian Weatherspoon, here talking with us this week here. Um, all right, everyone, sign off here. Make sure you um, make sure you good luck this week here for those who are in the playoffs. Um, take care. God bless, and I will see you all. We'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you then. See you soon, you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.